as a simple example, we can uh, we will see how to use uh, the Ampere's law to calculate the magnetic field surrounding a state conducting Y. Uh, since we know the, the answer, now we let we will we will see that using the the Ampere's law in this case is much simpler than using the Piyosawa's law. Okay. Uh, in this problem, we have a state, long state, uh, conducting, current conducting uh, Y. Okay. <coughs> uh, in this case, we can say that our problem has a circular symmetry. What does it mean by circular symmetry? Let's imagine that if this current is passing through a surface, a circular surface, a circle, a surface, passing to a center of a circle of a circular surface like this, which the, have the uh, radius of A. Okay. This means that every point on the boundary of this surface uh, are at the same distance from the Y. Okay. And as we already discussed that, the direction of the magnetic field will point uh, in this direction. It means that if we look at this uh, point, the direction of the magnetic field will point outward from the, um, the plane. Right? And the magnetic field in this post, uh, position will point, point, point inward into the, 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 plane, uh, the plane of the paper of the plane of the screen. And at this point, it points downward, it points point upward. Okay, we have discussed this before. Okay. So we know the direction. And we also know that this follows the right hand rule. But the second version of right hand rule, that is, if you point your thumb in the direction of uh, the, the current, the, the uh, direction of the magnetic field will be the same direction of your curved folding finger. Okay. Uh, the additional information in this case is that we know that the magnitude of the magnetic field must be constant. Right? Because if you observe the magnetic field at any point on the surface, uh, on the boundary of the uh, this circle, right? And we know that the distance from every point on the boundary of this circle to the Y are the same, right? So there is no reason that you will see the different value of the magnitude of the magnetic field at any point on the boundary of this circle, right? Because when you look back to the Y, you see the same picture and the distance are the same at every point on the boundary. So we must have that the magnitude of the uh, magnetic field are constant on every point on the boundary of this uh, circular surface. Okay. Now, we define the displacement vector ds that follow the right hand rule like this and then we will use the Ampere's law to calculate the magnetic field. The Ampere's law states that the integral of the cross line uh, of b dot ds is equal to the mu zero i. Okay, this is the Ampere's law. But we know that b and ds are parallel, right? You can see that b and ds point in the same direction. So we will have that. Um, B dot 
ds is equal to b ds, right? Because if two vector are parallel, dot product is equal to the uh, product of their magnitude. So we have that this integral become b ds, right? But we also know that b is a constant along the path on this circular path because uh, on this circular path, the, the, the current passing through the center of the circle. So it means that every point on the uh, boundary uh, at the same distance from the, the y. So we must have that b is a constant. And we can take b out of the integral. So this becomes b, oh sorry, b ds. Now the, the integral ds is the sum of the magnitude of ds. But ds is a, a displacement vector along the uh, boundary of this circle. So the sum of the ds is the nothing more than the circumference of the circle, which we know that we know that the circumference of the circle is two pi r. In this case, the radius of the circle is a. Right. By rearranging this. Uh, equation we must have that b oh sorry and we know that from the m pass law this is a mu naught i so by the range this we must have that b is equal to mu zero i over two pi a you can see that we can get the result very easily by using the symmetry and a little, little knowledge on the geometry. When you compare this with the calculation of the uh, Biosawa's law, in that case, you have to know the, the uh, trigonometry. You have to know some calculus. Okay, but in this case, even we use the uh, symbol of the calculus, like the integral here, but we don't know calculus here. We just use the physical meaning of this integral and can get the result from the knowledge of geometry. Okay, so we have that the magnetic field has the magnitude of mu zero i over two pi a, and the direction follow the right hand rule like this. So you can see that we can calculate the problem very easy using the m bas law, and it is interesting that. If we want to calculate the problem now, if the current is not passing through a thin Y, but the Y with a, uh, some diameter, okay, we have the current passing through the long but not the thin line in this case. If we know that the current path to the y uniformly on the uh, cross-sectional area of, of the y, we also need know that we have um, we still have the Circular symmetry, okay, and the Coulomb's uh, the Ampere's law don't care uh, about the uh, distribution of the current. It's just needed. What is the total current that passing to this surface? So, in this case, we can have the uh, solution immediately that the magnetic field B is equal to the mu zero i over 2 pi a. Here, a is a distance from the center of the axis, uh, from the axis of the y to the point that we are interested to find the magnetic field. Okay, so this is very simple. And, and if you remind, 
if you remember when you use the Gauss law, it is very very similar because we don't care in the case of the Gauss law, we don't care the distribution of the charge. We just want to know what is the total charge inside the core surface. Here, we don't care about the distribution of the current. We just want to know that the current, what is the amount of the current that passing through the surface. 